สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Thai Kitchen with Brenda. Today we have Keegan Swatsky here with us, and Keegan he's a wines expert, and he's gonna come and share with us what will be the best wines and beer that pair well with my recipe here, ค่ะค่ะ Let me explain นะคะ in the Thai cuisines นะคะ we have a four essential uh, basic tests นะคะ uh, one is the uh, sour นะคะ and second is sweet. The third one is salty, and the last one is creamy or rich in terms of coconut milk and curry. Okay. Today, นะคะ I make the uh, four dishes, นะคะ that representing the four essential tests that uh, I just mentioned, นะคะ before, นะคะ This one, the first one, it's uh, called lap, นะคะ and um, I make it with the three kind of mushroom and a little bit of tofu, นะคะ And this one led by uh, sour, นะคะ And the second one is the uh, called น้ำพริกอ่องนะคะ It's the uh, homemade chili paste with the uh, tomatoes, นะคะ And this one led by sweet, นะคะ And the third one, it's called uh, Thai beef uh, jerky, นะคะ And in Thai we call เนื้อเค็มเนื้อ is mean beef and เค็ม is mean salty. And of course this one led by salty, นะคะ And the last one, นะคะ This is the uh, Beef with the red curry, นะคะ have coconut milk in it, นะคะ and um, this is gonna be uh, rich and creamy, ค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Chicken. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thai Kitchen with Brenda, and uh, appreciate that your time uh, being here with us. I know that you are busy. Chicken have been in the wine business for a decade, and uh, so today he's gonna come and share with us what will be the best uh, wines and be a Dutch pair well with my uh, recipe here, นะคะ So, Keegan, can you introduce yourself to uh, the subscriber, please? Of course. I'm just a young Canadian boy that's been interested in wine since I've been allowed to be, and maybe a little before. Um, traveled the world with it. It's taken me tons of places. I've met some of the greatest people in my life through wine, and I think it's something really incredible to share with you guys. <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> no. Oh. All over your food. No, that's okay. Okay. So how, we will... how do I know? Uh, I need some towels to help yeah. you. Salty, rich. Okay. Apologies for the continuity and my vast expertise. I've exploded this, opening this all over the food. And it's... We're a little floppy. <laughs> So the wines that we brought today are generally applicable to Thai food. So these will like generally work with most things. I'll explain why, but we'll see if we can kind of match them up with these different dishes. So Thai food's so intensely aromatic that if you have any wines that are kind of weaker um, or not very aromatic, they can pair quite poorly because you won't taste much of the wine. So. Chardonnay, for example, would generally be a pretty bad idea. Um, so here, like we have some g e r t s c h m i e r This smells like perfume. So mm. you know, I walk into the house today. It smells amazing. You wanna, you wanna have a equal weighted wine to these super flavorful aromatic foods. Um, so if we if we go through pairing each of these um, Thai flavors with sour, you generally want to. Pair a wine that's relatively acidic because if you have a wine that's low in acid and you have a food that's sour, high in acid, the wine's going to feel flabby. It's not going to feel zingy. It's going to feel flat, watery, and it's unenjoyable. Actually, in particular, these two, Riesling and Sauvignon Blanc, they're really high in acid, so they can totally pair with um, any sourness in a dish. And all of these have a, a degree of that. With sweetness, you want to pair with equal sweetness. Which one is this? Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sweet. You want to pair with things that are uh, will have uh, a relatively similar amount of sweetness um, or flavors that are sweet. So, if a wine seems confected or like candy-like in its flavors, they can go really well with something that's a little bit sweet without having sugar. With salty food. Um, really, what you want to do is quench your palate. 
So lots of the time, beer is the best wine. I, I think that that's super viable in a lot of cases. That's why we have some beers here. Also with salty, you generally pair something that's a little bit sweet. All these dishes are relatively spicy. You need some element of sugar to combat that. The pairing that kind of showed me that pairings weren't just this magical kind of pretentious thing was I had a really sweet ball of Riesling with um, beef vindaloo. And you'll notice that when you have something high in sugar and something high in spice, you won't have the same heat effect because of what you're drinking and what you're drinking won't seem so sweet. So you'll it tastes more of the flavors of the wine as opposed to just the sugar or feeling gloopy or heavy. This dish here is really rich because it's fatty, because coconut milk is fatty. To pair with fat, acid. That's why champagne and oysters is a thing. Um, that's why one of the best pairings in the world is a bottle of bubbles and fast food, because they make perfect sense. Similar, we're combating uh, different flavor elements. So if you have something that's really rich and you want to eat a lot of it, then if you're just wiping the fat off of your palate with something really acidic, um, you can drink more and eat more, which is what life's about. So with all pairings, um, they can make sense on paper, but they don't always make sense when push comes to shove. So we'll try these and hopefully they work. I've got them in order to what I think will make sense, but maybe we'll switch it around. Sure. So first thing, we have a off-dry Riesling. I think that this is the ultimate Thai food wine. I think we're starting with kind of my personal favorite pairing for all Thai food. We have everything we want. Riesling is incredibly naturally high in acid. Um, certain styles of it can lend it to, can lend to being a little bit sweet. And it's super fragrant, fragrant, super aromatic. A trick, German wine laws can be kind of confusing. So if you're in a buying and you're in a liquor store, if you look for something from Germany, if, if you look for the word Spätlese, you're probably going to be in good territory and you can always fall back on alcohol. So if a Riesling is below, say, 10% alcohol, we know some of that sugar hasn't fermented into alcohol to get it to your 13.5% or 14%. So you know there's going to be some sugar in there. So that, that's easy fail safe. Okay. Kevin, we So this wine's like super aromatic. It's a little perfumey. It's really yeah. grapey, which is kind of a mm -hmm. note of, of Riesling. It's really zingy, limey, citrusy. It's um, and I think that having some element in citrus really helps cut through most Thai foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the wine I brought today is a little bit higher in alcohol and a little bit lower in sugar than I've recommended, but we still have some residual sugar. I think that'll pair well with the lap. Mm. I like that the um, aftertaste that is uh, acidic. Aftertaste is really nice. Really acidic. Yeah, really acidic, yeah. Teeth whitener. <laughs> so we don't have to brush our teeth. Exactly. <laughs> mm. That's really good. So, I mean, it really neutralizes a lot of the heat of this dish. The mint in this is super fragrant and that's really combated with the wine. I mm -hmm. think they're I think they're friends. I think mm -hmm. we got a good one here. Really good one, okay. If I change anything, I would look for something with a little bit more sugar. Mm -hmm. It's banging out of 10. And enhance, they also enhance the uh, lap. Yeah. They're just really, I mean, they go along. Food's better, wine's better. better. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I think this, this might be the favorite of the mall, mm. but we'll see. See at the bottom. Cheers. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna get wrong after this. Yep. Oh, <laughs> okay. Next up is another really classic pairing with Thai food. So Gewürztraminer is a grape that's loved by some, not enjoyed very much by others. But as a food wine, I think it really stands out, and I think anyone can see the appeal in that. Like I said before, Gewürztraminer is like perfume. It, it's it's absurdly aromatic to the degree that some people can almost find it soapy smelling or like walking into home scents. It can be a little bit much, but for, I mean, we're standing here and all you can smell is food. I think that they make a lot of sense. The one downside to Gewürztraminer is they can be low in acid. 
which of course, like if we're having something really rich or really sour, might not be a perfect pairing. This example is from Canada, but a great place to look is Alsace for Gewürztraminer as well. Um, typically there you'll find a little bit more sugar than we're finding here. Thirsty? Sure. So yeah, this smells like a pretty girl. It smells like perfume, it smells like scented candles. It's really, really aromatic. Really, yes. Um, it's quite different from the one that we have before. Yeah. Very different. Yeah, yeah. You can't smell sweet, but you can smell flavors of sweet. This mm -hmm. would be an example of something that is a little on the confectionery end. Mm -hmm. This is something that has some candied yeah. smells. Yeah, candied smell, yeah. Which was something that's led by sweetness. Should work really well. I hope so. With the um, chili in a tomatoes. This one's a little bit hot, spicy. Works pretty good. Good? <laughs> I think we're doing all right so far. Mm, so far so good. So why I don't drink a lot of Gewürztraminer on its own is because I think it's kind of absurd. It's so turned up to 11 in every way, but this food is like jacked up. Mm. It's sweet, it's actually quite spicy. So I think you need a wine to combat something like this. Mm. If you're trying to enhance the drink and the food, if you crush a pilsner, you're just resetting your palate, you're wiping it. I don't think you're necessarily making the beer or the food taste better. It's just every bite tastes fresh again. You, you, you don't get tired. That's very, like very good, yeah. I can find it quite, it's go together quite well. I mean, uh, when, uh, when you drink the wine, and all you will take the, um, some spicy and you just balance it out, hey? I mean, I'm not the wine for yourself, but it's really good. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is honey in here. Honey? Yes, honey, honey, oh. honey, honey. Okay, honey. Well, we're gonna try another one with this too then. Okay. So, if you are to read about Thai food pairings, you're gonna hear a lot about Sauvignon Blanc. It's really zingy, it's really acidic, it's super citrusy. So it's kind of a natural good pairing for these foods. My personal taste lends towards white Bordeaux, I think that my favorite wines from Bordeaux are the whites. I think it's kind of the best kept secret. Uh, here we have an entry level example. It's relatively easy to find. And the difference here is if you have, for example, a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, the most popular place consumption wise, it's overly aromatic to where it can kind of smell like broccoli or pungent or cat pee to some people. And it's really grapefruity, pithy, a little bit over the top for me. We have Sauvignon Blanc from Bordeaux you're, you're missing that pungency and it's kind of replaced with a, a honeyed character, like a little bit of a honey flavor, mm -hmm. um, which is why I want to try it with this one at the yeah. end too. The reason I think that this will go well with the salty dish here is again, we have a minor element of sweetness. It's more in how it tastes than actual sugar in the wine, but I'm hoping that this will pair very well with the salt. The wine seems more savory and you feel like you can eat more of the beef without getting tired. It seemed too salty. Thirsty? Mm. It smells like honeycomb. Like waxy. Yeah. Kind of smells like um, confit lemons, candy lemons. Mm. But it's unmistakably still a block. I mean, this can mm. kind of only be one grape. It's kind of, after taste, it's a, a little bit of acid, sour. Yep. Yeah. Really acidic. Yeah. Um, that's a big plus of, of Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. I think they sneak a little bit of semillon into this particular wine, which might make it a little more of that honey sort of flavor. But we'll see how it goes with the beef. Okay, let's see. Milk um, in Thailand, we uh, used to eat it with the, uh, this is gonna be appetizer, right? But you go with the beer, and uh, so this is the very famous of the uh, appetizer, that milk came. And you can also eat it with the sticky rice. So, but this milk came is making with the, um, mainly with the fish sauce, okay? And a little bit of sugar to balance it off, to balance the uh, salty off. And uh, so and that's it. Here, one for you. Thank you. Hmm. This is also pair a bit beer, okay? Beer. Yeah. I think this would be a little better with beer or a wine mm -hmm. with more sugar. It's nice, it's pleasant. I don't think they're actually super complimentary. Can't win them all. I think you'd want more sugar to pair with this, or okay. this is also something that any of these beers would probably be a better option. They're not friends. No, they're not friends. They can hang out, but they're not. What's the, yeah. rating? What's the rating out of 10? It's a bad rating. It's, 
<laughs> this is a basement rating out of 10. This is basement tenants to stay up too late out of 10. Probably be no five. But I think that the bubbles might work here. Mm -hmm. Not good. Not, Not good. a good pairing. No. Okay, we can move on. But so far we have a two of the best one. Really good. With the, with the lab and the chilies paste. Let's have some beer. So I think that that wine was such a flop. I think we're gonna try <laughs> some beers. I think That's first off, a pilsner is pretty sensible for all Thai food. It's just gonna wash your mouth out. Yeah, I'm gonna get drunk when I mix the drink. I'm a shit drinker. Okay, just tiny bit for me. Thank Lots you. For you. Slow Hands, a pretty cool producer out of British Columbia. They're making, I think. Personally, I think some of the best okay. lagered beers in the country right now. Wish they'd send more to the province we're in. Cheers. Cheers, cameraman. Bitter, no? A little bitter. Bitter, bitter. Delicious. I think this is going to make a lot of sense. Okay, let's I'll try let's this try. again. Yeah, this is so good. If it isn't mm -hmm. broke, don't fix it. I think this is, mm -hmm. this is beer food. Mm. That's awesome. We're gonna do that all day long. There are some bittering hops in this beer, so mm. you don't taste as much hops as you feel them. It's yeah. kind of a little bit of a chalky sort of bitterness. It feels awesome with something salty. But the bitterness, the, the salty, you just balance it yeah. out, eh? Yeah, they're friends. They're friends. Okay, we figured it out. So here we are. <laughs> Crisis averted. Slow hand is beer. Thai beef jerky, cheer. Okay, last up we have a dish driven by richness from coconut milk. Yes. So the last dish we have is driven by fat, richness. Um, so like I say, acid is really what you want to cut through that. I think fat and acid is the fundamental pairing. It's my, it's to me makes the most sense of any kind of beverage and food pairing. So here we have a extremely easy to come by. I think anywhere you're watching this, you should be able to find this wine. Louis Bouillot makes a quadrillion balls of this every year. So how to read this label? Cremant de Bourgogne. So this is, Cremant just means, simply put, the method of Champagne made in France, but not in the area called Champagne. So you can get all of the flavors from Method Champenois without a lot of the dollar figure associated. This one's rosé. It's, it's, super lively and really acidic and, and there's a nice kind of fruit component so we'll see if we can cut through your Seriously. rich food. That's right. Let's see with this. Yeah. And this is what exploded everywhere so oh. it best be good. <laughs> Cheers. So this would be fruity without sweet fruit characters. Like it smells like really ripe raspberries. Yeah, I can just have it by itself. Oh, this is very good. It's slightly toasty, like it's a little bit yeasty. It's a little bit like rising bread. Very nice. Like, and a little bit of bitterness after the after taste, eh? Little bit. A little bit. Little tiny bit of tannin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And tannin is what you want with salt. Tannin. So this one probably would be good with this one too. So it would probably be pretty good with this yeah. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. With the milk cream. Maybe we should try some. It's so good. Mm. You can eat this all night. But the salty of this is not too salty, isn't it? It's just salty enough, mm. you know, it just mm -hmm. give you enough salt. It's like meat, that. potato chips, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great pairing. That's awesome. That's perfect. Mm. Delicious. So, I'm gonna get married soon. Do you like these? Yeah. I might like the beer a little better. Yeah, the beer is the best so far, yeah. Should we see if this works with your beautiful... Your curry? Curry? You first? Yeah, of course. Then you're with honor. Thank you. That's the beef curry, red curry beef. Oh, hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Mm. So good. That is so yummy. The beef is so tender. By the way, this um, beef with bread curry. It's already posted, so you can go to Thai Kitchen with Brinda and click the curry, so you can post the recipe over there. The same thing with the um, mushroom, the three-card mushroom lab, it's also posted, 
So you can go to visit Thai Kitchen with Brenda and click lock with the three kind mushroom. Okay. You had better. Yeah. This one is coming soon. Chili paste with the um, toad tomatoes, nai in chili paste, and also nail camp. We're going to post it's coming soon. Okay. Mm. This is, I think, pretty perfect. I think kind of battling between these two being the best mm. pairings. Mm. But I think this is the best one. Yeah. I agree. It's because it's Riesling. I think if we yeah. had Riesling with each one of these. Yeah. And this is the best with your um, slow hand beer. That hurts. Yes. But Riesling is the holiest grape in yeah. all the land. Mm -hmm. But this is not too bad though. I mean, not. they're just like, a, you know, getting to know each other. Mm. You know, these two. Yeah, I like them. So, it's neutral. I don't think that yeah. they make each other better, but no, they're good friends. They're good friends. So yeah. they're getting, they're getting yeah. to know they, each other. They'll get to know each other. Yeah. So that's pretty good. So main component there is acid. Bubbles are super high in acid with fat. We got some more well, beers. We got some more beer. Oh yeah. So uh, just beer. in general, full flavored food goes great with IPAs. One of my kind of favorite IPAs made in the country uh, from Jujicelle in Quebec. And then we have a sour beer. So we have the this in beer form. Um, this has been dry hopped. So instead of being bitter, it's super fruity and aromatic and tropical. This will make sense pairing in all the same ways that this does. Mm. And this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this is, it's a uh, IP, IPA, IPA, that is a little bit bitter, isn't it? A little bitter, oh. so really good with salty food. Oh, this is Probably go great guy. with this. Oh, let's with, try with it. Okay, let's try. Yeah, let's try it. Gotta drink this first. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just not too much, please. I I need to uh, find my way home. Whoa, wow. chicken, that is yours. This is my way. Whoa. <laughs> Not too much for a cameraman. What do you smell? Then, Before we drink, what do you smell? I smell bitter. It's kind of piney. Like and piney, tree sap. piney, yeah. In Thailand, we have to say that the rubber, rubber tree sap. In Thailand, we have a lot of rubber plantation. So this is smell like a rubber. It smells like rubber. Rubber tree. Rubber oh, tree. rubber tree. Rubber trees. I believe you. Whoa. <laughs> Super full flavored. Kind of bitter. V. I think this can stand like, up to most things. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, huge. Without being overdone. It's not yeah. very sweet. It's not very malty. It's not yeah. like a West Coasty style. It's yeah. kind mm -hmm. of in the middle. It's New England kind of dates West Coast a little bit. <laughs> That's why I'm saying a rubber tree and a pine tree. So they are dating each other <laughs> from, from Thailand and Canada. So I think this would go really well with the lab. With the lab? You think so? Try it. I'm going to find out. I'm going to try with this. I think it's going well with this one too. So this beer with the lab, one of the best pairings to mm. The lab's so herbal with the mint, mm. matches perfectly with this beer. Beer can totally stand up. Mm. But with this, it's okay. It's not too bad. 11 virgins out of seven. <laughs> this one? Okay, this let me one. try. It's so good. Because of these things, you can, uh, with the lab, you test the uh, sour first and explosion of the heat and all the herbs, right? And you have the beer, and the beer, you just wash yeah. everything away. Hey? You're ready to do it again. Then do it again, 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 until. You drink as many of these as you can. Wow. Everything pair, this is drinking food. Everything pairs with lab. Yeah, so this is, by the way, this is the um, vegetarian and uh, vegans, because I didn't, I have no uh, animal products in here, right? We have three kinds of mushroom and tofu, soy sauce, also the, a lot of lamb juice and roasted and ground Thai chili in here, Naka. Do you have a video for your roasted and ground yeah, Thai chili? Yeah, we have. Yeah, you can go and visit Thai kitchen with Brenda <laughs> and click roasted and ground Thai chili, Naka. I use the brown sugar for the, uh, what do you call that? They just enhance their flavor, right? So, oh, we have one more beer. This one's yours. <laughs> I can't drink anymore. I mean, I'm a little bit tipsy because of the, uh, I'm a sh I'm a cheap drinker. I cannot mix my drinks. White wines and champagne and beer and so I have to find my way home. <laughs> this is kind of the beer equivalent of this wine. So we have a wine that's very acidic, fruit forward, clean. This is a sour beer that's been dry hops. Hops have been added late in the process of brewing. So without getting bitter and cooking them into the beer, they're just making them smell beautiful. Tiny bit, please, not too much. Mm. Want some more? No. 
So it's, this is super tropical. It kind of smells like dull pineapple juice. Passion fruit. Passion, Passion fruit, fruit. Yeah, yeah, tropical fruits, yeah. big time. Wow. Wow. What do you think? It's um, at first you can taste the uh, all the, the the fruits and then the uh, the acid. Super tropical. Yeah. And then yeah. super acidic. Yeah. Kind of wipes That's you right. up. That's right. That's right. I think this would actually go really good with this. We have to. And you try it and then you let me know because you're an expert. And I know that my food tastes good. All right. mm. Wow. Oh, that's hot. Wow. That's Indeed, pretty you good. When you take this one, it's just the ocean. It wash everything away. Yeah, that's, that's... And then it comes back again. Top Wait, three. You drink. Heat comes back again. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's up good. there. Thank you, Heaton. This is really... Educated. I have never paired anything that wines and with my uh, recipe and stuff like that. But today is really uh, eyes opening for me. Oh, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Wow, your food doesn't need enhancing. And the moral yeah. of the story is to drink more Riesling <laughs> every day. This is just only you know the four of the uh, dishes that I make. Hey, okay? we have more of the uh, tests like this to come, and it's every single one of them is blow your mind. You're right about that. Thank you, Keegan. <laughs> Thank you. And I uh, appreciate your coming today. Thank I you. You are a very busy man. Subscribe Thank to her you. channel or I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>